here with NSU coach Mike McConaughey. Coach, uh, a two-win week last week. You get a, a win against Abilene Christian at home, and you go on the road uh, to beat Houston Baptist. Puts you at a 7-6 in league play now with, with seven games to go. You talked about this team learning to string wins together. What were they able to do last week, particularly in the Houston Baptist game where HBU kept trying to make runs, but it felt, felt like y'all held them off there at the end? Well, I mean, the big, biggest thing is understanding you got to do little things to win, and also doing little things is, also means not doing some things that you've been doing. And our turnovers were, were, were lower. We had 11 turnovers on the game, and that was very, very important. But if you go back to it, we had some turnovers late in that game that allowed them to get some buckets on runouts, which uh, Houston Baptist is an extremely talented team. They can really score in, in bunches and, um, you know, made it really difficult for us because we didn't take care of the ball in transition, dribble it off her foot or throw the ball away or something like that. So they had six or five or six steals out of our 11 turnovers. And so a lot of times those steals were indicative of just making a bad pass. The one turnover, if you, if you dribble it out of bounds or you throw it out of bounds, at least they're not going the other way scoring. Because one of the things that they did do to make their run, and um, Jairus hit a big three to kind of negate that run there and push us back to eight points when they believe they cut it to five or six, eight to nine, is that they, we took some shots, three pointers that were long rebounds that they just got it and blitzed up the floor to be able to attack the bucket and to stay at the free throw line, uh, some place that we're not visiting very often. <laughs> it, you know, you mentioned the 11 turnovers against Houston Baptist. I think you had 15 against Abilene Christian, which against a team that I think they led the country in forcing them entering that game. Uh, what is this team kind of focused on or is doing better to, to limit those turnovers a little bit? Well, I think that, you know, I think our guard play is making less turnovers. We're still losing the ball from some of our interior players, our wing players. We're losing the ball a little bit too often there. But I think what we've had to do or our adjustments that we've made have been different. We've gone with, we've had smaller lineups the last couple of games because the matchups required us to have smaller lineups. And um, against Abilene Christian, basically they're playing three guards with two post guys that you know, weren't, weren't, they, they have a seven footer, but he didn't play a ton in the game. And then Houston Baptist had one post guy and four guards. Therefore, we had to adjust to them. And we did a pretty good job. Therefore, we handled and, handled and took care of the ball a lot better. Two home games this week. Uh, it starts a three game home stretch. This is a, a part of that schedule where you can, uh, you know, really make a, a statement and, and, and kind of secure that tournament spot. Uh, incarnate Word on, on Wednesday. Uh, you got to win on the road earlier in the season. Incarnate words sliced a big lead down to three there late, but uh, team held on. Um, what does that matchup present? And, and, and Incarnate words, a team that's won a couple games, they've got. Some I think problems. they've won three in a row, and I think that they're very, extremely well coached. I think that they are a very scary team because they do everything pretty good. You know, they're, they're sound defensively. They throw some wrinkles at you where they'll come and run and, and trap, and you guards have got to be prepared to handle that pressure. you got to meet all your passes, all those little things that we tend to kind of step back and, and relax a little bit and don't do. So they do a lot of good things well. Um, the big guy inside can catch the ball and finish it around the bucket. You're going to have to do a good job of guarding him and keeping everybody in front of them, uh, front of them so that they can't get to the basket. They use a technique, some people call it parachuting, where you drive up into the lane and you circle dribble inside the lane looking for somebody to throw the ball out for a three-pointer. They're pretty good at it. You know, and if they're making threes, it creates a problem because you really can't help off those guys. But that guard, if you if you don't keep him in front of you, he's just going to lay the ball in. So they do a really good job with that. They'll mix it up, man. They'll go some zone. They played a little zone against us last time, which hurt us a little bit. So it's just something that we got to do do a really good job of. Brian White uh, had 23 points against Houston Baptist. He's a guy that's that's been uh, producing in different ways for you, but that was one of his. Um, 
one of his big scoring outputs. What type of progress has he been making coming off that groin? Well, you know, glad to see him come out and have a good scoring night. And the reason he had a good scoring night is that he coming off the ball screen, the guy wasn't guarding him. He's able to get to the lane. Thought our bigs did a good job of sealing and doing what they had to do to where he could get it. And he just attacked. He made some shots. Um, you know, I, I know that Brian can score the basketball and we want him to score the basketball and we needed him to score the basketball to be able to win the ball game. So that gave us something. But that's another example of getting it from different places. And, you know, Trent Mastner against um, ACU had uh, 15, I believe, first half points or 16, and then only three in the second half for 19 points, I think, in the game. Uh, you know, Jovan Zelavaba had an eight the other night. He had a huge defense, uh, offensive tip in which he was held down by the right arm and he tipped it in with his left hand um, and uh, still trying to get to that free throw line. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but he's done some good things and his determination on defense is why he's been moved into the starting lineup. Because he can do some good things offensively, but he's just athletic, he's tough-minded. He'll get sit down and guard and get in front of somebody. So I'm excited about him, having him back off that injury he had uh, you know, has really helped if he can, he can stay be better. Um, you know, we're just getting in a lot of the new Nikos obviously has had four of the last five games and double figure rebounds, uh, has done some really good shooting. A bile has done some good job, some good, really good things, scored the basketball. Well, had 10, had a double, double against, uh, I think ACU yes, and, did. uh, did a nice job. Um, Got in foul trouble at Houston Baptist, only had five rebounds, but uh, made some really nice defensive plays, blocks, and, you know, or defensive plays that, you know, some they got to shoot free throws. They <laughs> still were good defensive plays. I'm kind of hung up on that today. <laughs> um, we, you know, we, we've been talking about the different pieces and the depth and how it all fits together. You've got a Jamari Gregg that's consistently doing eight to eight points, seven rebounds, things like that. Uh, we mentioned Masner and Zellenbaba and, and on down the list. Uh, a, a Ghidorah Quest seems to be even more involved in the, in the last couple of weeks. How, how is, if you kind of zoom out and, and how is everything kind of coming together at this point in the year? Well, go back, I'm glad you brought up Jamari Gregg because he's been really, he's been really, really good. Unbelievable in points of the game. Against UCA, he was phenomenal in the first half. He made a driving dunk shot that was, you know, his highlight film material. I mean, it was it was awesome. I mean, I'm not talking about a Northwestern highlight. I'm talking about anybody's highlights. And then, you know, C.J. Jones, who if you look at his numbers, you're not going to just, he's not going to bowl you, bowl you over, but he's just getting us where we need to be and doing a great job. So, you know, you've got a little push-pull with Brian and him there, and C.J. had had some good, he had good points. Uh, I think he had it six or eight against um, uh, UCA. So we're getting out of a lot of different areas, and um, that's important because, and I go back to this, sometimes I'm questioned a lot in, in, the, in the world of sports because I try to get people in games. Well, if you don't get people in games, what are you gonna do when you need them? And so sometimes maybe I overdo it on that end, but that's why I always believed in the, in the um, wave system because it prepares you with 11, 12, 13 deep to be able to get it done. And, and we've done a pretty good job. Our minutes have been pretty good. I thought our minutes were really good against UCA. And the other night, you know, uh, they were pretty good as well. Only had one guy over 30 minutes and, you know, we did a nice job with them. Brian had 22 something and CJ had almost 19 minutes, I believe. So you're getting good balance. Well, what does that do? It means that you're gonna be able to compete in both games at a higher rate, hopefully, of less fatigue because of being fresh. And being fresh at this point of the year with seven games left is very, very important because when the wear down hits, it hits right now and it carries on. You might get a second win right before the tournament, but you've got a little lull here uh, where the wear down can be very much impactful on your team. And then um, taking a look at the week overall, McNeese on Saturday, this is a team that, that won seven straight games in the league. They've, they've struggled a little bit in these last few games, but probably one of the most talented teams in the league, if, if not the most versatile team in the league. What, what types of challenges? Nah, do they, they, they've got unbelievable pieces and they're doing a great job. They win seven games in a row. I don't care you know who you are, you win seven games in a row, that's, that's pretty strong. 
and a lot of it could be the schedule. A lot of it could be uh, they got the, you know, they beat us and they kind of got on a roll there. I'm not saying because they beat us. I'm just saying they beat us. They went forward there. Um, they, they have a nice schedule uh, left. And so, um, you know, it's they're off this week coming into us, but they're really talented. And they, they beat us because they just whipped us on the boards in the second half. And that's something that, that we haven't been beat a ton of times on the boards, but we got beat that day. And I'm really concerned about uh, Incarnate Word about going and rebound. I'm really concerned about McNeese. I'm not getting my apple cart, my cart before the horse. I'm just saying that when you look at the two games ahead, that's going to be paramount for us to rebound and defend and uh, keep their key players out of a position to where they can really impact the game. Coach Mike, thank you very much.